Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. And have you ever wondered why it is that when you watch uh, a sci-fi TV show or something or a movie, you see a spacesuit that looks something like that? But the actual spacesuits that we have look something like this. So in the sci-fi shows, it's uh, technically that's actually kind of space armor, um, power armor, but you know they look really cool they look like futuristic and awesome and then you look at our real spacesuits and it's like they're made of cloth so why is it that spacesuits are made of cloth so the first thing we need to understand is what exactly a spacesuit does and the probably most important is that it maintains pressure around the astronaut so when you're on planet earth uh, all the essentially the weight of the air, the atmosphere of Earth, is pressing on all sides of you from the outside so that you don't inflate like a balloon and explode, which is nice. And uh, obviously out in space you need to have some sort of suit that is not only pressurized uh, but that also is prevented from expanding like a balloon. The second thing we obviously need is air because if you don't breathe you fall unconscious in a matter of seconds and that would also be bad. The third thing that a spacesuit needs to do is regulate your temperature. Uh, here on Earth, yeah, it can be cold outside, it can be hot, whatever, but out in space the conditions are a little bit more harsh. Um, you can be in the sun, you can be in the shade. Uh, if you're in the sun, the temperature can get as high as 121 degrees C or 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and if you happen to be in the shade, i.e. You're, you're on the dark side, the sun is not shining directly on you, the temperature can be uh, minus 233C or minus 387 degrees Fahrenheit. Now obviously these temperatures are much colder and warmer than pretty much anything we might uh, experience naturally here on Earth. So yeah, temperature regulation is very important. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind about a spacesuit is that if you're wearing a, a very tight-fitting uh, hermetically sealed suit then you're gonna overheat very quickly so uh, the primary thing that the suit needs to do is to actually keep you cool. And finally, a spacesuit needs to actually shield you from the uh, uh, bad things that are out in space. Uh, one example is ultraviolet radiation. Say you're in the sunlight, uh, there's no atmosphere between the sun and you like there is here on Earth. Uh, normally the atmosphere absorbs ultraviolet radiation and all kinds of stuff, and sure, there is some exposure, but it's not so bad. But when you're out in space, there's pretty much nothing between you and the sun, so the UV radiation is uh, extremely high. Also, there is uh, particle radiation, like little, you know, subatomic particles that whiz around at super high speeds, and if those particles pass through the suit, then they'll pass through your body, and that can cause things like DNA damage, which again is not conducive to living a very long time at all. And uh, finally, in terms of shielding, spacesuits need to protect the astronaut against things, usually they call them micrometeoroids. That can be actually tiny little bits of rock or whatever, as in like, you know, like a meteoroid, but it's teeny tiny. Uh, it can also be space junk. There's a whole ton of, of junk and satellites and things that broke apart, and you can very often have these little, little, teeny tiny, even microscopic bits of space junk. But when satellites go around the Earth, they travel very, very, very fast. So if they break apart, you end up with uh, bits, some of the bits fall into the Earth's atmosphere and burn up. Some of them just stay out in space and zoom around the planet, and if one of those even microscopic particles hits a spacesuit and punctures it, suddenly you don't have a pressurized suit anymore, you also don't have any air, and then you die. So, that's what a spacesuit actually needs to do to protect an astronaut. Now before we carry on, I want to go over a few fun facts about what would happen if you were out in space, or if I was out in space, without a spacesuit. Like if I was up on a space station, opened the airlock and just stepped out into space, what would happen? And this is kind of important because due to various sci-fi shows and movies and that sort of thing, there's all kinds of crazy things that happen, like people explode and like their eyeballs pop out and you know, that kind of thing. So if you're out in space without a spacesuit, um, you can survive for up to 15 seconds. Uh, you double in size, not like you don't really swell like a balloon, uh, like, you know, your whole body just basically doubles in size because there's no pressure, all of your flesh sort of just kind of swells up a little bit. 
Um, you also don't immediately freeze to death because unlike on Earth, if you were in like a flash freezer, you know, there's no air around you and so uh, your body only loses heat via thermal radiation, which is different than how you lose heat when you're in the middle of Siberia, for example. So it takes time for you to lose that heat, so you would not be flash frozen. Uh, also, your blood does not boil because it is actually inside your body, uh, so it remains pressurized, and your skin itself remains intact. It's not exactly super bad for your skin. Your skin remains gas tight. So basically what happens is you just kind of swell up, swell up a little. You look kind of like a muscle, muscle man, and uh, you don't instantly freeze to death. And the big problem is that there's no air to breathe. So you basically suffocate. And if before you step out of the airlock you hold your breath, then you're in big trouble because then you have explosive decompression and your lungs can be damaged and that would be mostly unpleasant. But basically you'd go out the airlock and essentially in about 15 seconds you'd lose consciousness and you'd suffocate to death and nothing really terribly exciting would happen like you see in the movies. So okay, our crazy modern spacesuit over here, what is it? Well, first of all, you have things like the helmet. Uh, the helmet has a visor. You, of course, have a backpack that provides life support systems and communication and all that kind of thing. Uh, but the suit itself is basically a rigid helmet with a visor. Um, there are various connecting rings to, you know, you can connect the gloves to the arms and all that kind of thing. Sometimes there are rings that actually extend the length or the size of the suit. Um, sometimes some suits have kind of a hard fiberglass torso, like a shell, as part of the suit, and, but all the rest of the parts of the suit, like the legs and arms and hands, are uh, basically fabric. But it's not just uh, normal fabric, it's actually 14 layers of stuff. So these 14 layers are, uh, the innermost layers are three layers for liquid cooling and ventilation. So it's kind of like a skin-tight suit, there's a bunch of tubes that go through it, and as I said earlier, uh, they, they pump uh, fluid through so that you can basically stay cool, because if they didn't, you would overheat pretty quickly. After that, there is a bladder layer to maintain pressure. As I said earlier, you don't, you know, you don't want to swell up like a balloon. Uh, you need pressure, otherwise you're dead, and so, yeah, there's this bladder layer, that's kind of like the pressure suit part of the spacesuit. But then, of course, if you didn't have the restraint layer, which goes around the bladder layer, you would swell up like a balloon. So not only do you need sort of this pressurized bladder uh, in the shape of your body, but you need this next restraint layer that kind of keeps it from swelling like a balloon and, and popping. Then you have a ripstop layer to prevent tears and punctures. That's sort of the, uh, the uh, kind of the bulletproof layer of the suit that makes sure that the inner layer is the bladder so you don't lose pressure. Uh, the ripstop layer protects the, the restraint and the bladder layers and you don't have any unfortunate accidents. Then after the ripstop layer you have uh, five or usually seven layers of mylar and dacron. It's actually mylar laminated with dacron and these layers are basically thermal insulation, it, so you can maintain temperature. After that, uh, you have the outer layer, uh, which is uh, usually called orthofabric. That, this is the sort of white fabric that you see where you're going, why are spacesuits made out of fa fabric? Uh, that out ortho layer is uh, it's three different materials. There is Gore-Tex, which is a waterproof layer. Um, there's Kevlar, which is essentially the bulletproof layer. And then there is Nomex, which is a flame-resistant material. So this, this ortho fabric, this white outside shell of the suit, uh, that's actually only one of 14 layers. And uh, that layer like reflects like the sun's rays and protects you against all kinds of stuff. Heat impacts, it's, it's like the super durable shell. So even though it is just a fabric, uh, it's a pretty awesome fabric. Okay, but still, you're probably thinking, well, okay, that's all well and good, Scotty, but, like, you know, why can't we have, you know, spacesuits like they have in the sci-fi movies, right? I mean, it's like... Well, the big problem is that the suit needs to be pressurized. And, you know, I've talked a bit about that, but uh, one thing you need to keep in mind is that uh, if you have a suit, say, like, the arm of your suit, and it's basically a pressurized balloon, and it's not allowed to expand and contract. It's kind of like this balloon here, <clears throat> where, okay, imagine this is my arm, and I try to bend my arm. Well, the suit is pressurized and restrained, which means that the, the volume of, of air, essentially, inside the suit is constant. 
it can't change. Now, if I take this balloon, you've got this uninflated part, so if, if we say this is my arm and I bend it, you notice that the balloon just kind of like folds there, and probably the end of the balloon here, it expands slightly when I bend it, uh, because this is not a constant volume. But if I were to pinch it off here and I try to bend it, you notice it doesn't kink as easily and it's actually a little bit harder to bend. So when you have a pressurized spacesuit, um, it's a little bit tricky because of this constant, uh, this constant pressure and constant volume. When you do something as simple as try to bend your elbow, uh, the actual structure and pressurization of the suit makes it very, very difficult. Essentially, the astronaut has to fight against the spacesuit. Uh, fight against the, the the pressure of the suit effectively. So you get, you can't just bend your arm easily. Uh, you're actually kind of straining against it. So modern spacesuits are actually tiring to use. And so what they do is they try to make it as easy as possible. Sometimes they have special joints and they have specially designed gloves. And uh, all of this is is designed to not only provide all the different types of protection that are needed, but also to make it as easy as possible to move in. So the fact is that at this point in time, we just don't really have uh, fancy enough technology to make something that provides uh, a pressurized environment, an oxygen supply, temperature protection, uh, you know, um, shielding against different types of radiation, micrometeoroids, that sort of thing. Uh, it, we're just qu not quite there yet. But there is this really cool thing called a biosuit that MIT is working on. They've been working on it for a number of years now, and it looks a little bit something like that. Uh, and what this is, is a suit that maintains pressure in the body via simple mechanical pressure. Essentially, it's an elastic suit. So you, you could just have like a, a balloon that in the shape of your body. It's pressurized, it's restrained so that it doesn't swell like a balloon. Uh, and there you go, you have the proper pressure. But given everything I said about if you go into space, you're not going to die the way you do in the movies. Really, the only thing you need to protect your body uh, in addition to the shielding, the only thing you really need is pressurization, and you can achieve that pressurization by simply basically a fancy spandex suit. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than that, which is why uh, places like MIT have been working on this literally for, actually at this point, decades. So the reason that they're trying to develop a suit like this is because not only do modern space suits not fit shorter people, um, they're not really well designed for women either, and so they decided to try and develop this uh, elastic compression suit. And, uh, of course, it would have a normal helmet and everything. Uh, it weighs way, way less than a traditional spacesuit. And uh, there are certain problems with it uh, in certain joints and uh, cracks and crevices. You can have problems, so they have to insert padding, and it has to be kind of custom-made for each person. And uh, it's not really a one-size-fits-all solution, but the end result will be a very lightweight uh, and uh, very mobile uh, spacesuit. It's, it will be very easy to, to move in it. You won't have the problems of the pressurized bladder suit, and uh, it is kind of the way of the future. So, right. So that answers our question. Why are spacesuits made of white fabric? Um, they, they are, but there's a whole lot more that goes into it than just that, and there are various problems that, have, that uh, engineers and scientists have been working on for a very long time, and uh, if something like this biosuit gets off the ground, we may indeed eventually see really cool futuristic spacesuits, possibly even with armor on them, and then you too can go into space and be a Martian space marine. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.